Hello and welcome back to the factoring lesson. This time we are looking at a trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. You probably remember that we just learned how to factor a trinomial of the form x squared plus bx plus c, which is pretty much the same as ax squared plus bx plus c, but with a slight difference. So in ax squared plus bx plus c, we have a coefficient before x squared, a coefficient a. And not only that, but the coefficient a, we must add, has to be different than 1. Whereas in x squared plus bx plus c, there were, there were no coefficients or visible coefficients before x squared. And that is because the coefficient a here was simply 1. So these two trinomials, as you see, are very similar to each other. So when we factor them, there are things that are still going to be similar. However, the fact that we now have a coefficient different than 1 in front of x squared is going to change the game a bit. So let's get started. In order to factor this polynomial, we have to use a strategy that is called breaking down the middle term strategy. Okay, now step number one, no matter what kind of polynomial you are factoring, should always be take out the greatest common factor. You want to do that because that will reduce your coefficients greatly and it will make the factorization much easier. If a is less than 0, it's still considered a factor that must be taken out. You want to take the negative sign out because the negative sign in front of x squared will complicate things a lot if we don't take it out. Step 2. We must identify the coefficients. And the coefficients we need to identify here are coefficient a, coefficient b, and coefficient c. And then we have to figure out two numbers that we will use to break down the middle term. Remember this is the middle term, the first, the last, and this is the middle one. When we break down the middle term into two terms, we need to keep in mind that we need special numbers. And it makes sense to say that the two numbers must add to the same coefficient as x because we cannot change the expression. So we're going to say that the sum must be equal to b. For the product, and I want to make some connections in here, if you remember when we factored x squared plus bx plus c, we wrote two sets of brackets. We started with an x and then we were told that we need to find two numbers that has that have the sum b, which is the same as in ax squared plus bx plus c. And we wanted the two numbers to have the product equal to c. In this case, we don't want the product to be just c, but we want the product to be ac. If you think about it, you can understand the reason why this rule here has changed. The product here was c because the coefficient a is 1, and when you multiply by 1, any number, that number won't change. Whereas now, in ax squared plus bx plus c, a is different than 1, so it needs to be taken into account. That's why we say the product must be a times c. Okay? And then, we need to break down the middle term and factor afterwards. I prefer to go over the rest of the steps as we practice factoring this question. So we have 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. I check for the greatest common factor and I have none to take out. And then I have to go ahead and think of how to break down the middle term. To do this, I must identify the coefficients a, b, and c. 
and I will say that A is 3, B is 8, and C is 4. And now I have to search for two numbers that have the product equal to AC and simultaneously satisfy the condition that the sum is B. Okay. So if you want to be more visual here, you write sum in here, and then we write the product right here. So in our case, the product A times C is 3 times 4, and 3 times 4 is a product of 12, whereas the middle term has a coefficient 8, which means that the sum of the two numbers that we are searching for must be 8. Now remember that when you practice these questions, you will go a lot faster than I am right now. So you can write right away that I'm searching for a number, two numbers that have a product of 12 and a sum of 8. I will start with my first set of factors. And I follow the same strategy as I did in factoring x squared plus bx plus c. So this one here. So I start with the smallest factor. So 1 times 12. That is 12. Let's check the sum. It's 13. So that means it won't work. And then I go increase the first factor as much as I can. So the next higher factor here is 2. The second one must be 6. Then I say 2 plus 6 equals 8. So we're going to say we have a winner here. And we're going to say the two numbers must be 2 plus 2 and 6. So here we go again. We are going to break down the middle term and express it as sum of 2 and 6. So we have 3x squared. That won't change. But the middle term, instead of 8x, will become 2x plus 6x. And at the end, we have plus 4. The next step, and you can we just finish step 4. The next step is group the first two terms together, the last two together. So what that means is that you're simply going to look at these first two terms as one unit and these last two terms as another one. It doesn't really matter in which order, in case you were wondering, you write the term 8x as 2x plus 6x or vice versa 6x plus 2x. It should give you the same result. And then the next step says you have to factor the greatest common from each set of terms. So from the blue terms in here, I have a common factor of x. If I take x out, then we are left with 3x plus 2. And that will be just the blue part of our expression, right, that we had above. And then we do the same thing with the pink terms. We look for the greatest common factor of the pink terms here. And the greatest common factor here must be 2. In brackets, you will have 3x plus 2. So there go the other two terms now with the greatest common factor out. Notice how we end up with a common binomial in each group of terms. And the common binomial is 3x plus 2. So Guess what? We're going to take out the common binomial, 3x plus 2. And we're going to write the rest of the terms in another binomial. So here we go. We have, let me just choose a different color here to do that, <laughs> purple. So we have x and plus 2. So x plus 2 will be, oh sorry about that, 
x plus 2 will go in the other factor, right? So 3x plus 2 times x plus 2 must be the factored form of the given trinomial. If you want to check, go ahead and expand. Remember, expanding is the opposite of factoring. So we have 3x squared, 3x times x. 3x times 2 is 6x. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. So that's 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. And that's how we check our answers. Now, one little trick that I want to mention here is this. In this step, when you take out the greatest common factor from each set or each pair of terms, you must always end up with a common binomial. If you do not end up with a common binomial, check and see your numbers because most likely you didn't break down the middle term into the correct numbers you should have had. All right? So let's move on to our next example. Okay, let's define the boundaries here. <laughs> and we have example two. Again, here we are. This is my middle term. These are my coefficients. Three, negative five, two. So I'm gonna say, I'm given the value of A, the B, and the C. And I'm searching for a sum of negative 5 right here. And I'm searching for a product of 3 times 2, which is 6 product of 6. So here I go. I'm going to write down here. Starting with product. Product must be 6. And sum must be negative 5. Again, you have some experience, hopefully, with how to find these numbers from factoring x squared plus bx plus c. So we start with 1 times 6. And we also keep in mind, all right, so what is the sum? Negative. How about the product? Positive. So product positive means both numbers have had the same sign. But because the sum is negative, it means that they're negative. So negative 6, negative 1. That's negative 7. Negative 7 is not what we're looking for, so it won't help us. The next factors are negative 2 and negative 3. Negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. And we're going to say, great, we got the numbers. So now we're going to break down the middle term. So 3x squared, instead of negative 5x, write negative 2x minus 3x, and then plus 2. Okay, and now we are going to group the terms. So we're going to say first two, let them be together. Last two, let them be together. And take out the greatest common factor. So from the first two terms, you see that you have a common factor of x. In bracket, 3x minus 2. For the next two terms, you see how you have negative 3x plus 2. You must have an expectation at this point and think, Hey, I need to get this as one of the factors, right? And another thing that you have to look at is the sign. If you don't see any common factors, remember how we said take out the negative all the time? And so we will here. So negative 1, I'll make the negative sign visible. And then minus 2. Remember that this negative two, the positive 2 will turn into a negative, right? And now we're thinking, do we have the common binomial here? We should always end up with a common binomial. As I mentioned before, if we don't, it means that we have made a mistake. So maybe the numbers we chose to break down the middle term by are not the ones. So here we go. We have 
3x minus 2 as a common factor and the other common factor will be made of this and this x minus 1. Now remember that and I want to mention that if we didn't write the 1 in here it's sometimes hard for us to see that oh there is a number here and we forget that in here right that's why i want to make a point and write a factor of negative one instead of simply writing a negative sign and hooray well done okay now here goes our last example again you may want to try this on your own or you may want to continue listening to the video i will complete it with you but this time I'm going to do it by showing as much work as you should actually in um, normal, I don't know, practice. Okay, so I go ahead and I say, I need this number, product, uh, sorry, gosh, I need this number, which is sum 13. Product, I go 5 times negative 6. So. I don't really want to write this. I can multiply 5 by negative 6 because I've passed grade 3 and grade 4. <laughs> so here we go again. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to positive 13. So sum is negative. That means one number is negative, the other is positive. And product is negative, so one positive, one negative. Sum is positive, which tells me that uh, the bigger number will be the positive one. So negative 1 times 30, the bigger number is positive. And I'm going to say, well, that doesn't add up to 13. It will have a sum of 29. So I go negative 2 times 15. Hey, negative 2 times 15, if I added it, it will give me 13 exactly so we're gonna say hey these are the winning numbers negative 2 and 15 so let's break down the middle term into negative 2 and 15 so we have 5 a squared plus 15 a minus 2 a minus 6 now I group I like to use colors when I am doing even ordinary work because it keeps my information organized so and my thoughts organized as well. So if you're like me, you may want to do it. But I can understand how everyone has his own strategy, right? So we have 3 left from 15a. And from the second set of terms, I have negative 2 as a common factor, a plus 3. I'm so happy that I ended up with the same common binomial which means that I'm doing this thing right and I'm getting the hang of it a plus 3 5a minus 2 and presumably that's the end okay so I hope that this lesson made sense if you found it that it gave you headache like at some point please remember it's not one of the easiest lessons to learn and concepts to understand give yourself a little bit of time try to listen to the lesson for the first time sort of just for pleasure and then read listen to it a second time and try to take notes and see how it goes so i hope this helped and bye for now